Hair. My name is Johnny Garza, I'm the Health and Wellbeing Manager at Everton in the Community. Today I'll be discussing um, the work that Everton in the Community does around supporting refugees, the benefits of it and the potential opportunities for refugees in the future. So Everton in the Community is the charitable arm of Everton Football Club and we are placed within the local community to support all members of the community uh, and that very much includes refugees as well. So we've been working with that population group for a number of years now, uh, delivering a number of initiatives. Uh, one locally is our refugee football programme, which is linked with Asylum Link and Refugee Action and the Red Cross. And essentially that is engaging refugees who are located in the L4 community which surrounds the stadium with an opportunity to include them in football activities, also with language development programmes and education programmes. In addition to that, we also have a Red Cross drop-in service every week where colleagues from the Red Cross will have a drop-in surgery here at our People's Hub facility, which allows uh, refugees to come in and seek guidance, support and advice on various different topics related to uh, processing their claims, benefits, work eligibility, um, as well as obviously health and social uh, agencies that might be appropriate for them to access. Uh, and then more recently, we've started our football therapy programme, which is in partnership with the uh, Uganda Red Cross in Uganda, working in the refugees in the north of the country, which is very much taking the work that we've done locally here, supporting people with mental health problems and translating that into a refugee setting in northern Uganda. Uh, and that has been really successful where we've trained over 40 uh, volunteers, uh, both refugees and community leaders and Red Cross staff uh, to support the local community within the South Sudan and uh, Congo population who have migrated over from those uh, war-torn countries into northern Uganda. The benefits are various from a social and cultural point of view, the diversity and that refugees provide by being integrated into the community are great and many. There's obviously many geopolitical and global relation benefits as well with developing and fostering better relationships with other countries that our country will be welcoming refugees from. Uh, and, and also from a business and entrepreneurial point of view, there's many examples of uh, refugees who've come over to the UK uh, as an example and lent their skills and expertise into various different indus industries, which has helped embed them into the workforce and the wider community, but also added real value to um, particular organisations and community groups. Well, I can only see it being a, a continuing positive one. Uh, I would estimate from a, a club point of view here that would be an area of work that we look to develop even further. Uh, even in our first couple of years of exploring this area of work, we've seen the great benefits of it um, and the impact that we've been able to generate. Um, so that would be something that we will look to develop even, even more, as I say. Uh, and the opportunities for, for work opportunities for coaches, opportunities for refugee football teams. Uh, that's something that we're really keen to develop over the coming decade, that there's that parity of esteem, that access to the same opportunities for people who are being welcomed into our community uh, from different countries, uh, that they have the same rights, protection and support as anyone else. So one example is Jacob. Jacob Vieira, who is a refugee from Kenya, who we've been able to support over a number of years, who had a great passion for football and for refereeing, and we supported through one of our programmes to help access the funds to go through his refereeing qualifications, and is now a very active uh, member of the local football community here, working alongside the County Football Association and many other community groups, uh, utilising the skills that he's been able to acquire. Uh, to benefit not just other refugee communities, but the wider football community in general. Uh, in addition to that, we've also worked with a number of refugees uh, on international shores. Obviously, our work in Uganda 
has been profiled recently and we've worked with an, a, a number of uh, individuals there who've shown great promise and, and one is Stephen from South Sudan who's uh, been able to set up his own uh, refugee football team which in time will be integrated into inter-league, uh, sorry, an inter-camp football league across the three refugee camps in northern Uganda which is Mpeve, Rhino and Bidi Bidi Camp. Uh, so we're going to be working with Stephen and his team to then cascade the training that he's received with a view to establishing other refugee teams in the camps that will then play each other in friendly uh, tournaments every month. Well, I think it's about raising the profile, raising the awareness uh, and being quite explicit in, in their marketing and their promotion as to um, their ethos and their welcoming um, environments for refugees to feel at home, that they are welcomed and that they have a place in society just as much as, as anyone else does. So I think that would be something that would encourage other organisations to take up the mantra with um, and, and raise the profile with a view to making uh, refugees and, uh, and asylum seekers be, uh, be comfortable to access their services. Yeah, we're, we're just in the process at the moment of um, gaining funds for our football therapy project to see how, uh, based on our initial pilot in Uganda and the results and the impact that that's been able to generate, how that could then be translated into other refugee camps around the world. So we're having a, an evaluation undertaken at the moment um, to obviously have some recommendations made as to uh, what works well, uh, what we can improve and ultimately how we can then leverage greater resources and funds to be able to support other refugees and other localities uh, across the world. I know obviously through the European Football Development Network they have a big campaign around uh, football welcomes and that's uh, very much around obviously how football clubs can share resources um, and try and build on the momentum and that's been built across Europe as to how they can uh, support refugees better within their communities through their football programmes and that's something we've been a part of and I would encourage as many of the Premier League teams and football teams at large um, to, to, to follow the suit and obviously see how their programmes can either be adapted or uh, more broadly um, advertised with a view to obviously including refugees in those programmes.